Rabbi Sean and I are from Suburban Temple Kol Ami, and it is my honor to be here with you as we gather together with Jeremy's family and comfort them as they mourn his loss and celebrate his life. We remember Jeremy and join our hearts together to give comfort and strength to his family. Mourning is a time filled with many emotions and memories, both bitter and sweet. We begin our service with the recitation of psalms, prayers, and readings, thus linking Jeremy's life with the millennia-old tradition of the people of Israel and the eternity of God. A reading by Chana Senesh, Yesh Kochavim. There are stars up above, so far away we only see their light, long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with the people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, long after their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days. These are the ways we remember. Okay. Our rabbis taught that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of royalty. But they emphasized that the crown of a good name exceeds them all. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, a good name is to be treasured above precious oil. Wealth, health, and even life itself passes away, but a good name lives forever. In this view, the Talmud teaches, monuments need not be erected for the righteous. Their deeds are their memorial. They will be remembered and revered for the kindnesses they have shown and for the love they have given. They are a shining example of what it means to be a mensch. Can there be a lament greater than for a young life lost? In the depths of the grief and despair, O oh God, keep us strong so that we may help the stricken to regain strength, help to support them as they ask the inevitable questions. We grieve for what might have been, for joys unrealized, for tasks undone, for hopes thwarted, for growth arrested, for love blighted, for challenges unmet. Help us to bring consolation to the bereaved Help us to raise them from the depths of their sorrow, slowly, lovingly. Help us to lead them from the night of desolation to the dawn of another day. May the memory of their beloved Jeremy return gently, peacefully to their hearts. May his memory live among them, even in their grief, instructing them in the ways of living and helping them to find meaning in the mystery of eternal life. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be an O, oh, to lose, a thing for fools this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing to love what death has touched. One of the greatest honors and greatest acts of love we, love we can offer another is that of Hesped, of eulogy. Jeremy was loved by so many, and he will be eulogized today by some of them. 
we will begin with his nieces and nephew, Mia, Josie, and Ellie. Jennifer, you can speak first. First is Sister Jennifer. Public speaking is not my forte, and I'm a hot mess. But not to worry, I have my handy dandy Kleenex, pack, Kleenex package, and you know exactly who, got it, who I got it from. My little brother was, and excuse my French, a fucking pain in the ass. He drove me absolutely crazy. And I simply haven't a clue what I'm going to do without him. Jeremy has been there for the kids and I, spoiling us with gifts, experiences, and treats, while simultaneously harassing us, making fun of us, and giving us a hard time. He will be terribly missed. I was, I was scrolling through Jeremy's 10 million selfies. I came across this one, which literally said it all. Jeremy brought happiness into all of our lives. And we are all better human beings because of him. It has been overwhelming to read your posts, see your photos, and watch your videos that you have shared. Jeremy touched so many lives and you touched his. From his Mayfield classmates, his Israel trip friends, his doormates, Sammy brothers at Ohio State University, his coworkers, his neighbors, and his buddies, and of course our family. I can't thank you enough for loving him and for bringing so much happiness to his life. My name is Mia, and these are my siblings, Josie and Elliot. We are Jeremy's nieces and nephew, or as we like to call him, Uncle Jeremy, or Germs for short. Jeremy was a wonderful dog dad to chase and treated us like we were his kids. He always supported us, gave us advice, and celebrated every major moment in our lives, from our births and b'nai mitzvahs to graduations. Since I don't really remember celebrating my birth, I'll share about my bat mitzvah. My bat mitzvah present from Jeremy was a week in Atlanta with him, and I had the best time. We visited the aquarium, ate at some of his favorite restaurants around Atlanta, and saw the Jersey Boys, which began my obsession with Broadway musicals. Four years later, when I began searching for colleges, Jeremy did everything he could to entice me to go to school near him. At the time, my favorite Minnesota-based coffee shop, Caribou Coffee, was shutting down all locations across the country, and I was distraught. Jeremy assured me that locations in Atlanta still existed and bet me on it. To prove his point, as soon as I landed in Atlanta, Jeremy picked me up and took me straight to the Caribou Coffee located just off campus. When we toured Emory, Jeremy did everything in his power to embarrass me, including daring me to hit one of the emergency blue lights, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Jeremy knew how to make us laugh and how to annoy the crap out of us. As an uncle, Jeremy was exactly what you would expect him to be, silly and annoying. Jeremy enjoyed telling us to pull his finger and poke each of us until we finally gave in, I'm sure you could guess what would happen next. I have never been good at waking up, but that didn't stop Jeremy. He threw stuffed animals at me until I got up or woke us up by, st by spraying us with silly spray. Worse yet, one morning when I refused to wake up, Jeremy scooped me out of bed, carried me outside and dropped me in the pool. And yes, I was still wearing my nightgown. Jeremy knew how to make us laugh and that usually meant picking on our mom as any good little brother would do. 
Every other year we spent Thanksgiving together and traveled somewhere fabulous. On our last trip, Jeremy got a hold of our mom's phone and went straight to her match.com app where he began mass messaging her matches. Josie, Elliot, and I thought it was the funniest thing and our mom was mortified, which only served to make us laugh uncontrollably. But mom wasn't the only one that got made fun of. No one was off limits. Jeremy kept us all humble and taught us that no one was too cool to not get teased. Jeremy was extremely positive, spirited, full of adventure, and an overall fun person to be around. Because of all of his unique qualities, no matter what the event or circumstance, Jeremy always managed to have fun and encouraged us to have fun too, especially if it was going to embarrass us. I remember when Jeremy, Mom, Mia, and Elliot came to visit me at college for family weekend in fall of 2017. First off, Jeremy was the first to arrive for the weekend because he was always early to everything, something I loved and admired about him. <laughs> because he got to Ithaca early. Jeremy was able to watch me compete on the varsity swim team for my university. During the event, I was able to see Jeremy standing up in the stands, front row, taking pictures and videos of me the whole time. I knew how much he loved me and cared for us because he showed it. At the beginning of the weekend, each person was supposed to type out their name and print it on a name tag. Special alumni, donors, or respectable members of the college were also given the option to attach a special ribbon to their name tag to recognize their leadership and dedication to the college. After seeing these fancy ribbons next to the name tag station, in typical Jeremy fashion, he decided to attach a vice president ribbon on his name tag and proceeded to wear it around campus and the town of Ithaca, New York the whole family weekend. I was so embarrassed by him doing such a publicly silly thing, but also that was Uncle Jeremy's favorite thing to do. After experiencing this and many other occasions with Jeremy, I learned something very important from him. Jeremy taught me the important life lesson of not taking yourself or anyone else or any event too seriously. So Jeremy, I promise to remember this lesson and live by it throughout my life. One of Jeremy's favorite activities with us was making bets to get us to do stupid things. Some examples were betting us to walk around to rest at restaurants and ask people how their food was or asking restaurant workers how much the fish in the fish tank on display were. Also climbing or breaking into places. We were visiting my sister, Mia, at college in Baltimore for college's family weekend. After dinner, Mia and Josie stayed on campus while Jeremy, my mom and I went back to the downtown, went back downtown to the historic Baltimore hotel that Jeremy chose. We walked the lobby where both Jeremy and my mom began to point out groups of girls running around in dresses with no shoes and loud dance party music. Sure enough, when we were in the elevator, it stopped on the ballroom floor and opened up to a sound of a DJ, pink and purple lights, and a bunch of kids my age running around. Immediately, we all looked at each other and knew it was a bat mitzvah. Once we got back to the hotel room and were getting ready for bed, Jeremy decided to bet me $100 to go back down to the bat mitzvah party, find the bat mitzvah girl, and take a selfie with her. Because of how cool and fun my mom is, she decided to jump onto the offer and double the bet with Jeremy. I was set with the first 100, the double made it better. I put my clothes back on, went back downstairs to the ballroom, and snuck into the butt mitzvah party. Although I it took me a while to find her, I got a selfie with who I thought was the bat mitzvah girl, and ended up with $200 that night. Only after Jeremy came down to escort my unintended minor self back to the room. From this story, Jeremy taught me the important lesson of carpe diem, or seize the day. More often than not, we all fail to act due to the lack of confidence or courage. Jeremy didn't care what you or I thought. He did what made him happy. 
After betting me to take this picture, among many other silly things he asked me to do, I will always remember that Jeremy truly believed in the way that he lived his life, every day the way he wanted. Whenever Jeremy went somewhere new, he was off to the races. Within a short period of time, he had seen it all, found the very best things, and made sure to share his discoveries with the rest of us. And Jeremy lived his life like visiting somewhere new, too short of a period of time, but doing the very best of everything. Jeremy was invested in our lives. If it was an important event, Jeremy was there for us. Although our time with Jeremy was much shorter than we could have ever imagined, he made a strong and lasting impact on each one of our lives. Jeremy, our amazing uncle, taught us the lessons we shared with you today, among many others, that we have to guide us through our lives. We feel lucky to have him, have had him such fun and caring silly uncle. We love you, Jeremy, and we miss you so much. We promise to take care of, your, of our mom and our brother, Chase. continue with Jeremy's friend Greg. I share the sentiment with Jennifer, definitely not a public speaker here. Um, public speaking professor would probably hold his head in shame as I'm going to just read this. I may not look up, but I'm going to try to get through this. As we all share stories of Jeremy, we all have just, we could probably be here all week with just funny stories of Jeremy. What I'm going to do is tell you what, how I process this after three days after we actually found out that Jeremy had passed. It took me a good solid three days to just wrap my brain around it. As I'm sure that we're all still trying to do the same. Uh, so Jeremy and I go back way back to preschool. Um, we had both attended Belcrest Kitty College. Um, needless to say we were all very we were both very advanced for our age having attended college at five years old. Um, we really became good friends in the sixth grade and stayed in touch. No matter where Jeremy moved, I always knew I had a home away from home. And believe me, I took advantage of that. I visited him in Columbus, Chicago, Atlanta, Asheville, St. Pete, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I even managed to actually crash one of Jeremy's road trips to Richmond, Virginia in 2017. Jeremy was the best host, the best tour guide. No matter what, we all knew he knew all the historic sites, restaurants, hotels, and he gave self-guided tours. He taught me the art of self-guided tours. He would walk in somewhere and just walk in, walk past everybody, whether there was security, didn't matter. Jeremy was walking right past him. He said to me, come on, walk with me, pretend you know what you're doing, and you belong here. Sure enough, it worked every time. Every now and then, we'd get stopped. Jeremy would just start chatting with him, asking him questions. Oh, what about this? When was this built? The architecture, the people, like asking him the 20 questions where the people then just kind of left us. But they didn't know what to say. But Jeremy ended up friends with them and he knew everything about whether it was a building, town, whatever it was, he knew. The Thursday night, we got a call from, I got a call from Jennifer. Jeremy had passed. Um, what, how could this be? My wife and kids were just there two weeks ago, exactly to the day. A few minutes ago, I was actually eating the popcorn that he gave me and my wife and kids. It's funny how he always told me I needed to lose weight, but yet he bought us two giant bags of gourmet popcorn to send us on our way. Because, of course, we never left his house empty-handed. Still have a little bit of that popcorn, Jeremy. I'm trying to make it last. So we get, arrived at Jeremy's new house, he gave us a tour. The kids were running around like my kids do. 
like crazy. I was petrified because obviously everyone knows that anybody that's been to Jeremy's house since everything's glass, his art, his knickknacks and stuff. He's like, don't worry about it. It's fine. They're fine. Still, my wife and I were petrified that they were going to knock something over or break something. But Jeremy was like, ah, they're good. They're fine. No problem. He decided to take us out to St. Pete to the, see the new pier. As we walked around the pier, he to, of course told us where everything was and the kids noticed there was a gift shop. Of course, Jeremy took them into the gift shop. Hand sanitizer, masks were all used, just so everybody knows. <laughs> he was taking the necessary precautions. Uh, my son Evan picked out this like 3D poster of a shark and Kylie picked out hand cream. I said, hand cream, is that really what you want? That You can get that anywhere. You come all the way to St. Pete with Uncle Jeremy, you're gonna pick out hand cream? She's like, I love scented creams and soaps and everything. Jeremy said, oh, well then I have just the place for you. We went back to his house and he took both kids into his bathroom, his guest bathroom, and shared some of his secret stash of soaps. He had this big giant drawer of soaps and lotions and all these things that he carried with him, home with him from trips. Um, the kids were definitely very excited about that. Um, again, just Jeremy sharing what he has with anybody. I think what makes it so hard to accept is Jeremy wasn't sick. He was just the opposite. He had walking like 200 feet ahead of us, and I consider myself a fairly fast walker. My kids are even running to keep up with him. And so he was the picture of health. He had the best possible life he could be living. He had just bought a new house. He was making new friends in St. Pete. He had all these projects. Who, who could buy a brand new house, first person ever living in it, and still find projects? Jeremy. Jeremy had trees coming, furniture being delivered. He was going to expand the patio. He had plans. He wanted to make that his home, and he definitely was doing that. I personally, as well, I know everybody hates that Jeremy's gone at only 51 years old. I do try to find comfort in the fact that Jeremy lived life more than anybody could ever live in 70, 80, 100 years. I mean, by far, my grandmother lived to be 94, God rest her soul. Jeremy still lived way more than she could have ever imagined. And with that, I'm going to hopefully eventually try to find comfort in that. My message to Jeremy, you were one of a kind for sure. Everyone knew your goofy side, but your true friends got to know your kindness and generosity too. When you made a friend, they were your friend for life. You always kept our group together by hosting reunions whenever you were in Cleveland. He'd come into Cleveland and rather than us having him at his house, he'd rent somewhere and he was still hosting. It was our home, but he was still hosting all of us. That was just Jeremy. In your honor, a few of us have spoken and gotten together, and so we're going to keep that going. We're going to make sure to keep our friends close in your honor. This terrible loss is going to remind me to value each and every person in my life. And the biggest, most important job that I have now, Jeremy, is to crash your sister. And I know I have big shoes to fill, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Don't forget, Jennifer, I know all the stories. I, uh, if your kids want to hear any blackmail material on you, I got it. Uh, Jeremy and I uh, took a lot of uh, road trips with Jennifer down to Little Italy, and we're just going to leave that at that. Um, but uh, definitely have some great stories and great memories of our big sister, Jennifer, <laughs> showing us what to and not to do. <laughs> uh, but, Jeremy... I'm honored to have been your friend for 40 plus years. I thank you for being you. One last sentiment, a friend of us sent a couple of us this just little message, this little meme on Facebook today. And it hit home. I thought, you know what, this is a perfect way to wrap it up. It says, when we lose someone we love, we must learn not to live without them, but to live with the love they left behind. It's just amazing words, and thank you, Gretchen, for sharing that with us, and I'm going to try to do exactly that. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Greg, and we will now um, hear from Jeremy's friend, Joel.
So Greg, I think you have me beat, because um, I met Jeremy when we were both campers at Annisville Day Camp. He still tells the story of um, me changing in the bathhouse, and as a little kid, I didn't want anybody to see me, so I used to wrap a towel and change, and he still tells that story embarrassingly um, ad nauseum. Um, Jennifer and I actually graduated from high school together. So Jennifer and I are the same age. Uh, Jeremy was always this attractive kid that was a couple um, years younger than, than me, than us. And we knew each other, but I really didn't interact with Jeremy until my late 20s. Um, and once we met, we just connected. And it's, it, was, uh, it was a friendship that lasted for life, literally. So three weeks ago to the day, I saw Jeremy. I wrapped up a great vacation. I spent almost two weeks with my best friend. He picked me up at the St. Petersburg airport and drove me to get coffee because he knew that's what I needed. Afterwards, he took me to his beautiful new home that he purchased sight unseen. We pulled into the garage and there were still packing boxes off to the side where he promptly told me it would be my job to tear them down. I guess that was the cost of admission to his home. Upon entering into his house, I saw a collar and a leash, and at that moment, I knew that his trusted companion, Chase, was nearby on his dog bed with his blanket. The transition from walking from the laundry room to the main part of the house was astounding. What first caught my eye was this gallery wall, right, Jay? Full of portraits, pictures, and paintings, all unique and one of a kind. I saw our artwork on tables, countertops, and ledges. He was still looking for more ledges because he had so much art. It was, lock, it, was like, it was like walking through a fine gallery. There was art at every level. Immediately, my concierge took me to two guest rooms and said, choose one. I chose the one with less windows, and he said, I knew it. I don't like to sleep with any light. After settling in my cave of a room, my concierge turned into a docent and gave me a tour of his beautiful house. Every, other, every aspect of this house is a reflection of this man. Some that is quirky, some that is purposeful, and is exactly what you expect from someone as complex as Jeremy. If you were ever honored enough to be a guest in his home, you were showered with gifts or five. Most recently, I came home with a unique coffee bug to, to add to my ever-growing collection, a silly t-shirt and two small fine prints that were literally sitting on the bed that he knew which room I was going to pick. This personalization was the rule for anyone he met, although these were tangible gifts, he was really giving you a piece of himself. Last Labor Day weekend, I was visiting Germany in his then home, Asheville, North Carolina. We went to dinner with some of his friends, and afterwards we took a round town where we stumbled into a jewelry store. Almost immediately, Jeremy just wandered off. And I too started looking around, and it didn't take me very long to notice a particular ring. And I asked to have a closer look at it. It was unique, it was handmade, it was just, it was just cool. Jeremy wandered back because he noticed that I, something caught my eye. And he said, buy it. I'm not one to make an impulse buy. But Jeremy tried to convince me he even offered to pay half of it. I declined, and we just left and continued to explore Asheville. So during this particular visit, we were already planning our next adventure, which was spending New Year's in Puerto Rico, as Jeremy and I both enjoyed traveling. Before I knew it, New Year's had arrived, and on my Uber ride from the airport, I Jeremy texted me over and over, nagging me to tell me if I was there yet. By the time that I did reach our hotel, I didn't need to check in because Jeremy had already arrived. When I got to the hotel room, Jeremy already chose his bed, leaving me with the only, only empty bed in the room. I settled my belongings down and noticed a tiny package on the pillow of my bed. Jeremy and I never shared holiday gifts and never shared birthday gifts. We would just send gifts throughout the year. So I wondered what this package was. I opened it up and it was the ring that caught my eye a few months earlier. I was truly taken aback at that time, but that was just Jeremy. Those shocking moments weren't uncommon for someone close to him. For my birthday two years ago, I traveled to New Orleans. Mind you, Jeremy was not a part of this trip. I told Jeremy my birthday trip two months prior, and he asked me what restaurants and what sites I was planning to visit and eat at. I totally dismissed it and said, I'll figure it out when I get there. He got irritated like literally irritated with me and said there are some wonderful restaurants in New Orleans and I needed to make reservations immediately. I didn't. My birthday comes and I traveled with a friend whose birthday is the day before mine. And when I got to New Orleans, Jeremy sends me this long text that included restaurants, dates, and times. He planned out my entire 
weekend. Crazy. So, every restaurant was amazing. Their meals were memorable. He texted me because he knew what times I would be at those restaurants and I had to show him through, through Messenger exactly what I was eating. He was a planner. I took many trips with him and the itinerary was always set well before we arrived. Since last week, I've been in daily contact with 10 or so of Jeremy's best friends. I find it interesting that they've all been checking in with me and they've all said that I was his best friend. And what I've come to realize in the past week is that Jeremy had many best friends. Jeremy loved his friends and spread his love for all of us. I'm just honored and humbled to be considered one of his many good friends. So I spoke with Jennifer this past weekend and one time she called me and she asked me how I was doing. And I wanted to know, I, I thought that was strange. I'm like, how are you doing? And I was honest. I said, I'm, I was in shock. The tears have finally stopped, but I'm angry. She asked me why I was angry. Remember? I said I was angry because he loved us too soon. I lost my travel friend who would hop on a plane at a moment's notice and meet me with, you know, on some new excursion. He made me sing camp songs to him because we went to camp together and he wouldn't talk to me at times until I sang a camp song. That was planned for today, but we did it the other day at the rabbi's house, right? Okay. I told Jennifer that I have more years ahead of me and he won't be around. And the late, last thing I told her was that I was mad with him because he was gonna make me be in a suit and tie today in the middle of summer talking to him. Just a pain in the ass. Jennifer abruptly stopped me and yelled out to her kids and said, get me his will, right? Remember this? Gets the will, I think it was the last line, and she literally read the last line that basically at my funeral, no jacket, no tie, no suit. He planned his funeral because he was a planner. Jennifer, I know today provides a little closure for you and your family, and I know we all wanna know why we're here today. But know that I, along with all Jeremy's friends, love you and your children. We have adopted you and your family, you're my sister now, you're my nieces and my nephew. Thanks for including me this past week in all the intimate and delicate conversations and planning activities needed to get here today. Know that Chase is in good hands right now and is watching, and know that we all share in your loss. We love you. beautiful words for a beautiful human. Once, there was a great Hasidic leader, Zusia was his name, and he came to his followers. His eyes were red with tears, and his face was filled with fear. Zusia, what's the matter? You look frightened. The other day I had a vision, he answered. And in it, I learned the question that the angels will ask me about my life. The followers looked puzzled. Zeusia, you are pious. You are scholarly and humble. You have helped so many of us. What question about your life could be so terrifying that you would be frightened to answer it? Zeusia turned his gaze to the heavens I have learned that the angels will not ask me, why weren't you like Moses, leading your people out of slavery? His followers persisted. So what will they ask you? I have learned, Zeusia said, that the angels will not ask me, why weren't you like Joshua, leading your people into the promised land? One of his followers approached. Zeusia and placed his hands on Zeusia's shoulders. Looking him in the eyes, the follower demanded, but what will they ask you? They will say to me, Zeusia, there was only one thing that no power of heaven and earth could have prevented you from becoming. They will say, Zeusia, why weren't you Zeusia? With this tale, the rabbis teach us that what God truly wants from us in the end of our lives is that we will be able to say that we were the best version of ourselves. God doesn't want us to compare ourselves 
to others or to their accomplishments, but God, rather God wants us to constantly ask ourselves in any situation, did you do your best? I believe that if Jeremy were greeted by angels and they asked him, why weren't you Jeremy? He would be able to answer, oh, but I was every day of my life. About 15 years ago, Elizabeth Gilbert wrote a book about an adventure she took, which was subsequently made into a movie, both of which were entitled Eat, Pray, Love. I believe that if they wrote a book or made a movie about Jeremy's life, it would be called Eat, Prank, Love. <laughs> Jeremy loved to eat. He was a foodie and loved a good meal. And he loved to find the best local restaurants wherever he traveled. If you were going somewhere, New Orleans, Philly, Atlanta, anywhere really, you could ask Jeremy, and even sometimes unsolicited, he would tell you where you had to dine to have the most amazing meal. All local eateries, no chains. And he had a special affinity for Jewish foods, whether it was his visits to Davis Bakery every time he came to Cleveland or great Aunt Minnie's brisket. He loved to eat the food of his people and to take pictures of it and then to post those pictures so he could make everyone jealous. And Jeremy was a kid at heart and even more than food, he loved a good prank or dare. Whether as Elliot shared with us, it was daring his nephew to crash a bat mitzvah party or hijacking Jennifer's online dating app and responding as if he was her or the show he put on at dinner when the shrimp and fish came with the heads on. Jeremy's motto was the sillier or crazier, the better. And if you were embarrassed, all the better. Jeremy only doubled down. Eat prank, love. Jeremy filled his life with good food and big laughs, and Jeremy loved fiercely. He fiercely loved travel. The minute he decided to go anywhere with anyone, he became the travel agent, planning every detail of the trip and then becoming tour guide once you arrived. And whether it was on one of these trips or just in everyday life, Jeremy loved tchotchkes, art and antiques and he not only loved to fill his own home with these but he loved to give them to friends and family through care packages you may not have found jeremy and temple often but he loved and was proud to be jewish he met some of his best and closest friends on his teen trip to israel incidentally this was the same trip on which he pierced his ear and then freaked his mom out with said earring as he uh, left the plane. If you were within a 10 mile radius of the airport that day, you could hear her shrieking. And Jeremy was excited to go back to Israel years later to celebrate Elliot's bar mitzvah for a wonderful week with family and friends. And while Jeremy fiercely loved all of these things, it was the people in his life that he loved the most, his family, his mother, his sister, his nieces and nephew, and his extended family. And we cannot forget his four-legged family member, Chase. And then there were also his friends. If you met Jeremy once, you were his friend. And as Joel said, every single one of his friends thought that they were his best friend. Family was important to Jeremy. Friends were important to Jeremy. And friends were family to Jeremy. While I never had the honor or the pleasure of meeting or knowing Jeremy, after spending time with his family and his friend Joel, I certainly wish I had, because I know my life would have been better for it. Jeremy's charisma, silliness, and zest for life could make you think that there wasn't much below the surface. But Jeremy was also deeply intuitive, caring, compassionate and forgiving. 
All of this made him someone who made your life better just by being in it. Yes, I believe if Jeremy was greeted by angels who asked him if he was the best version of himself, he could indeed answer, yes, every day of my life. And we will honor his all too short life and his memory best by striving to be the best version of ourselves every day of our lives. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of the sun, we will remember him. In the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too shall live, for he is now a part of us as we remember Jeremy. Psalm 23. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. We have two prayers that are we traditionally say as mourners in Judaism. The first is called El Malay Rachamim, and the second is called uh, the Kaddish. We will begin with El Malay Rachamim, and I'll ask the family to stand. El Malay Rachamim, Shochem Bamromim, Hamse Menucha Nechona Tacha Kanfe Ashkina, Im Kroshim Uturim, Kizoar Harakia Masirim, Et Nishmat Jeremy, Shahalach Olamo, Baal Harachamim, Istirehu, Veseter Kanafab Lolamim, Vayitzur Bitsur Hachayim, Et Nishmato, Hu Nachala To, Vianuach Bashalom, Al Mishkavo, Venomar Amin. Fully compassionate God on high, to our loved one who has entered eternity, grant him clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy, forever enfold him in the embrace of your wings. Secure his soul in eternity. Adonai is, he is yours. May he rest in peace, as together we say, Amen. May the love and eternal connection of our souls give us strength as we turn to recite the words hallowed by time, sanctifying the name of God, we honor the memory of Jeremy with the words of Kadisha Tom, the mourner's Kaddish. To lead the Kaddish this afternoon, I would like to call up Jeremy's friend and fraternity brother, Stu Spiegel. Yiskadal, the Yiskadash Shemay Rabbah, Biyama Dibra Chiyosei, Biyamlich Malchusei, 
May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved as we say together, Amen. In Jewish tradition, to shovel dirt into the grave is a mitzvah, a righteous act we do without hope of reward. With this act, we take on the responsibility of caring for our loved one until the very end. Our loved one deserves to be buried by kind hands, knowing hands, sorrowful hands. First, I will do the first shovel, then we will ask the immediate family to go next, and then you are invited to participate in this mitzvah, a painful act, however, one born of love and compassion for those who have meant so much to our beloved Jeremy. Adonai Natan v'Adonai Lakach, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach. With Job, we have said, God, you have given, God, you have taken away. Blessed be the name of God. May the memory of Jeremy be a blessing as we mark his essence, we will, which will never leave our hearts and souls.